Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jan Leary, and I want to welcome you to the Truth Zone. Today we have a very special guest. His name is Bill Moorhead, and he's from the Chandler, Arizona Church. Um, he did a pretty remarkable thing, this man. He went over to Quanzhou, China. I hope I said that right, Bill? But anyway, um, I know some things about China, and I find this absolutely fascinating so I'm just going to spend this time really talking to him about what his trip was all about because I wanted to start off and ask you Bill um, I know that Voice of the Martyrs it's a special group Christian group and they put out a calendar and they actually have you pray for Chinese pastors that are in jail because there's not religious freedom in China so why don't you tell us a little bit about that, what you saw when you were in China? Uh, yes, when I was in China, um, I guess where I was at, there was a little bit more freedom, but we have to remember a lot of our pastors that go over there that this is a, a communist country, and even the people of China who are pastors uh, don't have that same religious freedom that we afford in the United States. Even though China at this time is opening up, in fact remains is that uh, uh, China probably has the largest uh, group of, of Christians probably any place in the world, even though most of it's being done on the ground. That's phenomenal because they say like places like China, believe it or not, Iraq and Iran, one of the fastest growing Christian countries in the world because of the persecution. It just makes people want to do the opposite. You tell them they can't, you know, see Christian television. Now they really want to find out what it's all about, so they're looking it up. But I did hear that about China as well. And um, I wondered if you noted, you know, because China actually does a lot of our manufacturing. China does a lot of our, um, really, they've taken over in a lot of ways. How are the people over there? Are they, do you feel like, overworked in their society? Or um, is it easy to lead a Chinese person to the Lord? Um, tell us a little bit about that. One of the things in, uh, in China is that we have to remember, because it is a communist country, uh, they own everything, and uh, everyone in China has to work. They either work, or uh, they just don't, they don't have anything. and. Uh, I noticed with the people there, they don't talk to other people very much. They, they always got you know that kind of sad look on the face and stuff. And but the difference is, is when we find a Chinese that uh, has accepted Christ and get into uh, to be a Christian, uh, they have, you can see they have so much joy. Uh, kind of give you an idea. I went out. Uh, we went out to have uh, lunch at one of the uh, restaurants. And uh, there was probably about 15 of us from the church, and everybody was having some laughing and having such a great time, and everybody in the restaurant was just staring at us because they just couldn't understand to see, you know, these Chinese people having so much joy and having, and, and having a great time. You know, Bill, honestly, I think that is one of the best ways to promote the gospel is through joy, because you're right. If it's a communist country, they are oppressed. We over here in the United States don't realize the freedoms that we have. It's just really sad because, you know, um, a lot of us should be a lot happier because we have the freedoms that people do not have. There are 54 hostile countries in the world, and these are countries that will imprison you for your belief in Christ. You know, I just want to throw in a little thing there. That, to me, would prove that Christianity was right. If there were 54 countries that said, we forbid Jesus in our nation, that alone would say, hey, you know what? To me, 
He's got to be the real McCoy. And so, Bill, tell us a little bit about your trip. You went over there, and you were actually doing financial classes. Bill is a finance man, and I think he's been doing it for quite some time. Tell us a little bit about what it was like when you were over there. When I was doing the financial classes, uh, and I had done some uh, looking up on the Internet, too, because you always need to prepare when you go to a different country to understand uh, what the, uh, the type of credit and stuff that they are, in fact, getting involved with. But I have found that uh, one thing they are, they are, in fact, savers, but the other thing is they are spenders, and they all run up their credit cards, just like the rest of us do. And uh, it was great because uh, they really were so attentive. Uh, and I did about a two and a half hour session one night and about an hour session uh, the next night. And uh, just, to, just to watch their faces and see how they attended to understand that, because uh, basically what I'm doing, I'm teaching finances also based on the Word of God. God, there's more in the Bible about finances than there are anything else in, in and, uh, and the Bible. And, you know, and I always start out right away with the fact that if you want to have a good marriage, the first thing you need to be sure that is that you have finances because that's usually the uh, biggest problem with marriages is fighting over how the bills are going to pay, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, the response I was getting from everybody, there was many, many questions. Uh, it was a little hard doing it because I did have, did have to do some, interp- uh, some people had to interpret for the, uh, uh, for it, but uh, uh, overall, I still get emails from some people telling me thank you and that some of them are, in fact, following the site, the guidelines of uh, doing a budget and trying to become better with the finance, especially the fact that they would love to travel to the United States uh, and come over here to one of our conferences. Uh, they already do go to conferences in Malaysia. I was lucky enough to be there when this from the church that I attended, 17 people were able to get there. and. The good thing about it is when they went back, they had about four or five that had found out that they were, in fact, getting raises in their pay because, I would say, because of the fact that they, they work at this room so much better. Um, but that is unheard of in China. There's, it just doesn't uh, happen. Uh, at least that's what they explained to me. Well, that makes a lot of sense, Bill. You know, and I think, like you said, when... Um, you give your life to Christ, your wallet gets saved too, and you can't outgive God. That's one thing I can testify to say. You just mm-hmm. cannot. And almost like when you're a Christian, no matter how much you still you, you give away, you your house is full. I, I have to purge every year now. It's just unbelievable. So there is a lot of truth in what you're saying, and I believe it totally. Now, you were saying, like, the people in China, they're oppressed, obviously, because they don't have that religious freedom and things like that. What else can you tell us about the Chinese people that you've noticed that's a big, big difference, say, from here to over there? One of the things, at least I found in our churches, most of our churches are filled with young people from the ages of about 18, maybe to 25. Uh, Very seldom do you see the parents come to the church. Uh, That was one of the things I had noticed. And the church I was at, we only had a couple married couples that were in there. And normally the Chinese people, they get married at a much later age, probably in the late 25, uh, 25, maybe to 30 years old. Uh, but it was so interesting that they are normally told that they're going to continue to come to one of the churches that they were not going to be allowed to come back home again. And a lot of them have been fighting through that. Uh, but it was very interesting. The interpreter there, his mom and dad finally just gave up and trying to give him the ultimatum. And they decided to come in and come to the church and find out what it was all about. And what a, an amazing thing. They came in and got gloriously saved. And this is something that's really unheard of in China. Uh, so it's just an, another thing that shows that Christianity is, in fact, growing. And 
and it was a great opportunity for me because I had to pass on how I got saved because I got saved because of the result of my daughter loving me and showing me an example and showing me how the Christian life was dealing with her and that's how I got there so I really kind of explained I said this was a great opportunity to say you know what if you want your mom and dad to get here you need to love them you need to respect them and you need to be not being there and hopping on them and everything else and after a while your exampleship hopefully will get them to come to church well that's incredible too bill and um i wanted to ask you a question i know with the arabs and the jews a lot of times their persecution is taken to a different level there's even physical abuse we've even seen some movies about this and things like that is there a lot of physical abuse in china with the parents or is it that they just totally ignore them and just won't have anything to do with them yeah, I've heard that uh, in, from other people that there is some physical abuse in China. I don't have anything to uh, document that by any means, uh, other than the fact that they, they just tell me that their parents will just go ahead and basically disown them and uh, don't want them to come home if they're going to continue to practice Christianity. Wow. That's not so good, but <laughs> so tell us about your stay there. You must have noticed like a lot of things that were just so different. Um, are the, do you find that like when you were over there, the people were very overworked? I mean, are there, do they work longer than eight hours a day? Um, what did you notice that were some of the key things uh, that they dealt with every day? Well, this is going. To be, this is really a tough one for me to answer at this time because I, you know, I didn't spend that much time. I was only over there about seven or eight days, and uh, I just know that that people are always on the move. They move fast over there, uh, and uh, it seems like they they've got to be someplace all the time. They're always going. Uh, the a lot of what I've seen there, may, I mean, it looks almost sometimes you wonder if that is is really a, 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 a I would say maybe almost a, like a first world country there sometimes. Because when you go downtown, you go down to our church, we have our church down there in downtown Guangzhou, and uh, it looks like any other city except that you see a different nationality uh, walking around. But uh, they don't, and they're not free to talk to you. They don't talk to each other. Uh, and so I really, you know, I really don't have a, you know, I wish I could give you a better answer than that. Now, I noticed, Bill, one time when I was in Germany, the people there were, like, so clean. If your car leaked any oil or anything, they came out, they handed you a mop and a bucket of water and told you to clean it up. You know, they were just really amazing. And... Um, I understand this could be something like that in China. Why don't you tell us about how the people in China are? That's a good, interesting uh, question. Uh, I can remember taking the uh, the uh, train uh, from the airport out uh, about 55 minute ride, and as soon as we get to the other end, everybody had to get off of the uh, train, and they'd move it down about 100 feet, and they'd turn around and they would clean it all up and uh, and get it ready, probably take them about maybe 10, 15 minutes, and they bring it back to the track again. People get loaded, and they go down to the, the other end, and they do the same thing uh, again. Uh, even the other thing I noticed is uh, where the pastor was living at, I went over to his place, and we would go park our car in the garage, and it was forever down there, somebody down there mopping floors. I mean, as soon as you moved out your car and were left there, somebody was in there with a mop and stopped mopping the floor so uh, I guess that's uh, again that's probably another way of keeping everybody busy too in a, in a communist country well that's extremely inspirational I'm gonna go home and clean my house <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing Bill is what about the violence um, you know did you notice a lot of violence there did you notice you know anything really particularly strange about China when it came to the police or anything like that yeah, surprisingly, I didn't notice any violence there. Uh, and then you don't see groups of people hanging out in the corners. Like, like, again, like I said earlier, everybody's just always on the go. They've got to be somewhere, somehow, for some reason. And uh, I very seldom seen any police over there. Maybe, 
maybe I might have seen one or two patrol cars. I'd never seen any police walking up and down the streets or anything else. And it kind of indicates to me there probably isn't very much violence there. So now the church that you were at, Bill, did you know any of them have any outreaches when you were there? And did you get any uh, firsthand opportunity to see how they witness and respond to the gospel? Did you see any people that were saved when you were over there? What did you notice about the people when they were told about Jesus? Well, one thing, at every service, including the financial seminar, there was at least some, one person that did, in fact, get saved. Uh, I didn't go out on any outreaches with them uh, because uh, with everything that was planned, with the doing the financial seminars at night and then having the regular services on, sa on Sunday and Wednesday, uh, uh, we didn't go out on any outreaches, but I was informed that they all go out. In fact, they have a band. They usually take a band out and they go down to the parks and they play in the parks and, uh, and uh, pass out, they pass out flyers and uh, uh, they, from what I'm understanding, they very seldom go to an outreach without, you know, maybe two, three, four people at least praying. Uh, pe they're just open. The, the, the people are open. This is something that they've never heard. Uh, I can remember uh, them telling me that they did a thing for Christmas there, and everyone that had come there had never heard the word Jesus before. Never. That was the first time they did not know that that was considered as the birth of Jesus Christ on Christmas. That's unbelievable, because some of the testimonies that I've read, you know, about some of the Christians that were in jail in China are actually over there making Christmas lights for us in the United States. Very kind of sad thing. But, um, Bill, it sounds like you really made an impact, you know, on these people's lives over there with their finances. I mean, really, that's quite extraordinary. Tell us about follow-up. Have any of these people like, gotten in touch with you? Have they said that what you brought over there really helped them? Or, you know, tell us, have you received any feedback from these people? Yes, I have. I get emails all the time from the church over there. Um, they either telling me, you know, thanking me for coming on again. They can never thank you too much for the things that you do. They, they are so appreciative. And, uh, and so a lot of them are telling me that what I given the information to give them, they were putting it to work, and it was, in fact, working uh, uh, for them. And uh, so, you know, that's that, that's just a great blessing in itself. Uh, and again, uh, they're learning now that uh, they, wanna, they, they want to have the opportunity to have other things, and I think they do realize that it's, everything belongs to God, and uh, they want to be, be responsible people. And, uh, and they sent me emails on everything. They just got through having a revival there uh, here last week, and uh, they sent me emails showing me pictures of the revival and stuff. Uh, and uh, it, it's just a joy to uh, to receive this because I th believe they know that I love them there, and they think that that's so so important, and that's the reason why they will continue to come back. Uh, and so I think when we're, so I, I guess you put it this way: when somebody goes all that way just to go and spend some time and visit them it makes a real impression that we really in fact do care and we do want to help them that's incredible bill i mean um what do you think do you think or do you see yourself ever in the future maybe going over there do you actually would you like to go over there again it seems to me like you've made some pretty incredible friends how do you feel about the future for you and going to visit them in china I certainly would like to go back there again someday, but uh, right now what I'm looking at is, you know, just to have, uh, uh, to be able to have a relationship there. I, right now I happen to be working on uh, one of the young ladies in the church. Her name is Teresa. I'm trying to get her a, uh, a visa. I just sent a lot of invitation to her, and uh, I, I want to sponsor her to come over here and spend about five weeks uh, and have a chance to uh, go to some of our churches here and a couple of our conferences here. And uh, and I know they're looking forward to I don't know who's looking forward to it more, me or them. Uh, but um, so my, I ask people, if you would just pray that the government will give her a chance to come over here, because sometimes it's difficult when they don't own anything uh, to let them leave. So actually, Bill, you do these financial classes. Um, now tell us about it. Where else have you done financial classes? 
And um, if you had an idea of something that you would like to do, where is a place you would really like to go and do some financial classes? Uh, yes, I started doing financial classes uh, here in the United States. Uh, I've uh, went to numerous uh, churches here in the United States and, and uh, done them. And I was talking to my pastor one day, and we, he talked about, you know, why don't you sometimes see if we couldn't get you to go overseas and do some of them. And uh, I was kind of scared, believe you, at first. But then, you know, after going on and, and researching everything, I kind of understood, you know what, they have the same problems we have here as far as taking care of the finances and the money. Uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough to go and do these classes in Malaysia. I've done them in India. I've done them in Australia. Uh, I've even done them in Mexico. And uh, it's, it's just great. I mean, I just love doing them. But one of the things I did when I was in Malaysia, uh, we, we were there for what they call a, a rally, and we had churches that came in here from the Philippines, and they came in from India, from Thailand, from Vietnam, from uh, Cambodia, and then also from different areas in Malaysia, and I uh, had a chance to talk to all of these pastors, and every one of them would love to have me come and do one of these classes for them. So one day, I like to go back over there and just go to Malaysia because it's a great place to go to all. Everything's about an hour to, to the most four hours away, uh, uh, and it's very inexpensive. And I'm hoping that one time I might be able to spend about maybe three or four weeks there and just go to each one of these places and do a class for them. So, Bill, tell us, was there something or even in your life that impacted you just in such an amazing way that you'd really like to tell us about it? Yes. Uh, I remember when I first got saved, uh, I believe it or not, I was a financial wreck. Uh, I didn't know which way I was going and how to pay my bills. Uh, but after a while, and I started listening to God's Word and the preaching and put the Bible together, I decided that, you know, I have to be responsible for what God uh, has given me. It all belongs to Him. And uh, so once I learned that, uh, it's been overwhelming. God has blessed me so much uh, and given me the opportunity to be able to share with those others. Uh, that's probably, I guess, kind of the person I am. Uh, uh, I get most of my joy from being around others and being able to share testimony with others, uh, being able to help people financially when I can, uh, and just the fact of going over to these places. And it lets everybody know that, you know, we really care. Our fellowship really cares for these churches. And uh, uh, to send somebody and allow somebody like me to go over there and get great friendships. I mean, I can remember not long ago, I was about four, I guess it was about uh, March, I was in intensive care in the hospital for about eight days, and I was amazed. I mean, I got uh, emails and texts text from people from India, I got, got them from Malaysia, uh, I got them from China. Uh, so it's, it's great to be able to go. I can go any place in the world, and I'm going to find somebody that I either know, uh, I'm going to enjoy meeting. Well, Bill, I just have one final question for you. I understand that you went through an amazing miracle. Why don't you tell us all about it? Uh, yes, uh, last March, um, uh, I had what they call a brain aneurysm. I ended up being in the hospital for about eight days. And uh, I had people from all over the world that were actually texting me and they were uh, either that or emailing me that they were praying for me. Uh, I can remember the next morning after I got into the hospital, the doctor came uh, to speak to me and my pastor also come up that morning and prayed for me and, I, and he said he wanted to find out where he was going to perform the operation on me. And I told him, I said, you know what, God's healed me and I really and truly believe it. And he says, well, we're going to take the test anyway. Well, they took the test, found absolutely nothing wrong, they couldn't find anything, kept me there for another six days, took the test again, as again, they still couldn't find anything. So they sent me home and uh, had me come back in four weeks and finally they just had to release me with a clean bill of health and this let me know that uh, I have a very slight chance of it ever happening again and, uh, and all I can do is thank God for the, for the healing. Well, Bill, I just really want to thank you so much for sharing your testimony and you know it's just a blessing to have someone like you in a fellowship that you know it actually can you know you can just go around and bless people with your wisdom and uh, I want to thank you for sharing everything and I want to thank you folks out there for watching the truth zone 
God bless.